Welcome to Letterbox Book Club. My name is Claire. And I'm Mackenzie. That gulp, though. <laughs> <laughs> and today we will be discussing Throttled. Letterbox Book Club. <laughs> no, Throttled. <laughs> Are you trying to throw me off? Jesus. Yes, yeah, sorry. Throttled by Lauren Asher, book one of the Dirty Air series. Which, now yes. that I think about it, I don't think just the term Dirty Air has any relevance to, like, this book. I don't... Yeah, it's the dirty air on the racetrack. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> All right, I'm done. You fool. Goodbye. <laughs> I'm a fool. Sometimes I just don't think about these things, all right? Sometimes I'm good, sometimes I'm not. Oh, great start. Excellent start. <laughs> uh, read the bur- blurb, please. I will. Let me get the blurb. <laughs> What happens when my brother's rival becomes my secret crush? Noah Slade is a formula... Where did it go to? I clicked on something. (laughs) It's gone. It's gone forever. (laughs) Okay, here we go. Here we go. Noah Slade is a formula... (laughs) Try again. Take a deep breath. Start again. (sighs) What happens when my brother's rival becomes my secret crush? Noah Slade is a Formula One legend in the making, focused, unapproachable, ruthless on and off the track, a man with walls higher than the Grand Canyon and my brother's new teammate. I want more of the prince who disguises himself as the villain, but while I crave a happy ending, he wants to destroy his. Maya Altore is a forbidden temptation, an ambitious postgrad I should stay away from, and chaos wrapped with a bow. We are a ticking time bomb, about one wrong move away from exploding. I want to trip the wire, detonating together in passion and pain, but in the end, all's fair in lust and war. Love it. It's a very dramatic blurb, because I feel like their romance in general is just not as explosive, but that's probably just me. I suppose that's the point of the blurb, is to get you hooked in. <laughs> or at least, I don't know if this the Goodreads description is the blurb blurb, but it'll do. Yeah. Alrighty, thoughts, feelings, and emotions. Kenzie. I actually liked this book. Yay, love that. I know, which is a surprise. Um, I liked it because um, I was hyperfixating on Formula One for a while. Oh, yeah, because th- the Melbourne Grand Prix was happening at the same time you same suggested time. this book. Yeah, yeah, that's why we did it. <laughs> We're just very slow and I've been very sick, so haha. <laughs> Anyway, I liked it. I enjoyed the slow burn. I had some qualms. I had some gripes, but that's okay. They were all kind of resolved. Um, I did think, because it's a series, I thought that the other ones were going to be about Maya and Noah as well. It's, they're not, so I'm a bit sad to see them go. Because I think they had more of a story. But Yeah, we've since learned that each book... There's four books in this series so far, and they're all based on different racing ca- car yes. characters. Drivers, yeah. Racing car characters. <laughs> I'm off to a great start. Honestly, threw me off. Hey, I've never claimed to love F1. <laughs> Anything else? No, that's all. Okay. I think I'm more like, I don't like going too much into it because spoilies until we get into the plot. For sure, for sure. My thoughts, feelings and emotions. I did enjoy it. You know, it's a different sort of niche environment, race car driving. Again, something that like I f- I'm not too familiar with. But I did used to watch some V8 supercar racing. I don't know if that's international if it th- or if that's just strictly like Australian driving around the country. But in terms of like race car racing, like that's all that I'm familiar with. Um, yeah, it was cool. I enjoyed it. Yeah, enjoy the slow burn romance. Do also have some qualms. And what did you say? Gripes? Turning away from... Yeah, qualms to gripes. We love to see that. Uh, yeah, and it's just an, an interesting outlook because I haven't done any research into Lauren Asher herself if she's like into Formula One or if it's again just like a hyperfixation niche environment that she decided to write about. And yeah, you just learn a bit more about the Formula One sport and perhaps aesthetic with them bouncing all around the world. Um, and yeah, I enjoy the slow burn between Maya and Noah. I almost forgot his name. <laughs> And just in general, but I know before going into plot stuff, but I did enjoy how Maya's social media career was not an obstacle to Santiago's racing. They're like the both careers and reasonings why she's amongst the tour really complemented each other almost. But yeah, no, overall, really enjoyed it. I disagree. (laughs) We we can definitely talk about that at length (laughs) soon. And we will. Cool. That's it for me. All right, so let's get into the plot. Sure. Of the book. You're not continuing. You <laughs> I feel like I've been talking too much. And this is your book. You can you can go for it. This is my book. I wrote this book. <laughs> um, 
um, <laughs> dual point of view, it starts off with um, Maya graduating college um, with some sort of degree. I don't know. Ooh, yeah, it was a Bachelor of something. It was media communications, I think. Or was that was was that something else? I don't. It's been a, oh, yeah. No, we've been online. stewing That's on this. Not where it starts off. Sorry. <laughs> we're, all, we're a bit thrown off. We're online today. It's all over the place. Um, it starts off with like a year before, and it is a crash between Noah and um, Santiago, Maya's brother. I liked this though because it sets the precedent of Santiago's reckless. Well, he's always known to be like a reckless driver, and it also is consistent throughout the book because, of course, yeah, they do crash a couple times. I liked that setup. Yes, so that's where it starts off. And then it goes into Maya's graduation, um, and we find out straight away that um, her college has been paid for by her brother's uh, racing career, I guess. He is a multi-millionaire. He's a multi-millionaire. Big bucks. Yeah, which is very nice of him to do that. And then she basically explains that, like, she doesn't know what she wants to do and then so and then there's like the grand prix coming up so she's just going to follow along santiago on his grand prix she gets to travel she gets to do some vlogs she gets to figure out what she wants to do do social media yeah and this is a gap year and that's like four months isn't it yeah something like that it's it was a long time or i suppose it could be four months of racing but then they had like breaks and stuff in between so, yeah, I don't know. It could even be up to between four to six months. But, yeah, it's a long time yeah. bouncing around. And then, obviously, like, when there's off-season, they train anyway. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, so I want to talk about Maya's social media account. Okay, cool. All right, here we go. I'm scared of what you're going to say. No, because essentially it just starts off like she, it's her private Instagram. Like, it's her Instagram. And she has it on private. And she said she deliberately does that so that, like, it creates more of, like, an allure or whatever. So, like, people have to request to follow her. And then also the only reason that she, like, and she gets really big. But the only reason she gets really big is because she's the sister of Santiago, who's famous. And and she interviews all the famous race car drivers who are all inherently <laughs> very, very attractive. Right, yeah, I get that. And then so, and then also she's not making money off it this whole time because she says, like, in the future, like, she'll start making money off it. And so essentially Santiago is bankrolling this, like, vlog holiday for her. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, she is very much in a privileged position to be able to, like, yeah, start from scratch and then build her way up so quickly as well and successfully. Yeah, having the privilege of being, you know, pit side, yeah, interviewing all the races, races interviewing... Even the engineers, all the behind the scenes stuff. Yeah. Despite it being a privileged position, I think anyone who was willing to do social media would definitely jump on that sort of opportunity, especially if it's something she wasn't serious about. I think she really just wanted to do the travel and the vlogging, but it's the realizing that the Formula One aspect of it is what's kicking off. And so she decided to utilize that a bit more. I feel like, yeah, just the. I suppose sometimes you can't really pick your target audience. And then once your target audience has been set, you have to. I suppose, be consistent in that regard and adapt. So I think that's ultimately what she did. Again, we acknowledge that she was in a very privileged position to do so. And with Santiago footing the bill for her, I guess, four to six month travel. Well, I guess it's not him. It's his company, like his race car team. Oh, uh, uh, yeah, yeah. That is putting her up as well. But I suppose in this in this world, everything is easier when you're rich. Yeah, I'm not thinking about like that. So I'm thinking about like her day to day. Like she's probably out there getting her little Starbies treat. Like, <laughs> yeah, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah yeah i get that yeah and, but what i was gonna say before is like i think maya even says santiago is very big on like trying to look after his family and being capable of doing so and i think that's just something he's just happy with but again yeah it's a very it's a very privileged situation mm. but yeah i also yeah as i said before like i didn't i liked that it wasn't much of an obstacle to santiago's career but there was a moment later on where he's like is sure vlogging is something that you want to do and she's hit like millions of followers by that point and he's yeah. starting to doubt her which i didn't really appreciate yeah. but i suppose he's just frustrated because he was losing and not doing too well and so it all starts off as well where so there's obviously like racing teams and santiago has been picked up by noah slade's team so whilst they're still competitors they race for the same team so there's like got to be a sense of camaraderie yeah, that's so awkward. Yeah. 
because I, I guess within the context of V8 supercars, it's obviously the exact same thing, and you see them race against each other, and you see them competitive and trying yeah. to let each other win. Yeah, they also get, like, team points as well, so it's like you kind of want to be coming first and second. Oh, yeah. Yeah, it's like a dual – it's like two championships in one situation, yeah. More the individual and then the team. They're the Bandini – I think that's how you say it. Yeah, Bandini, yeah. Brand. And then we have the McCoy brand. I was a little annoyed <laughs> – that we only heard of the Bandini and the McCoy uh, driving brands. I don't know how else to say. Businesses, I guess. Throughout majority of the book. And then within the last probably quarter, they threw in a couple of extra random car yeah. company names. It was like, where have you been? And just the cycling. I understand the book wants to be concise as well because it is really about Maya and Noah and then their little inner circle. But yeah, we really the only real race car drivers that we get to know, to an extent, is like Liam and Jax and Noah. But like, what happens to the other writers? They have their books, so that's yeah, yeah, for sure. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. But they're like, we never hear of anyone else. You never hear of anyone else on the sneaking in on the podium. It's just the same three or four rotation mm. through. But to be fair, that kind of does make sense because in V8 supercars, for a good probably ten years, normally the same five people rotate the podiums because they're just that good, and you just can't help that. Another thing is that when um. Probably a bit of ASMR. I'm eating the most delicious grapes. Are they crunchy? They're so crunchy. <laughs> um, they are like it's announced that they're like on the same team and stuff. And then there's like a press conference, and Noah is kind of intrigued by Maya because he doesn't know who she is to start with. But like she's of at course. the back, like filming and stuff. And I was like, I don't think that like your sister or whatever. Like even if she is a blog, vlog, well, she's not an established vlogger at that point. But it's like I don't think she would be allowed to be filming like an official press conference like <laughs> like surely they take phone i feel like in those situations they like take phones and like personal phones off like the media i don't know it just seems it's like an open media room as well but again i guess being a part of the bandini team she has that sort of access whether or not i suppose also like just behind the scenes stuff but just the whole yeah noah observes her because yeah he's never seen her before and then is all immediately intrigued we know how that works <laughs> always and she's uninterested in what he's she's saying wearing like little short shorts and she's got long brown hair and blah 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 and he didn't even recognize him and uh, santiago and her are siblings at all <laughs> mm-hmm. but yeah th- this book is also very oh, i don't want to say repetitive but there is a familiar cycle which there's a lot of press conferences there's a lot of social engagements and then there's the racing and then there's the post engagements and stuff like that yeah very repetitive although all in different areas of the world like they could be in china they could be in russia etc etc but yeah i don't know if you felt that that got old pretty quickly but like they gotta have a social life otherwise what conflict is gonna social occur life. yeah look i don't know bro i'm just letting it go <laughs> it's like forest all over again forest 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 so yeah noah is intrigued Yes, and he kind of makes a fool of himself, puts his foot in it at the start because he kind of like flirts with her without knowing who she is. And he is the obvious racer fuckboy of the system as well. Yeah. So everyone knows who he is. Everyone knows his reputation. So yeah, now he's just trying to lay it all on this new girl, I guess. Um, And then I don't remember the intricate details, but then like she tells him and she's like, oh, or like Sunny is like, that's my sister. Yeah, I don't know. I think he said so- – he insulted Maya, I think. Yeah. In Probably a way. Like and a then, slut or something. I don't know. Yeah. Or even a whore. Yeah. But she assumed that – he assumed that she was sleeping with Santiago. Yep, yep, yep. Which is not cool. <laughs> you don't make those <laughs> assumptions. But he's like the bad boy, the fuck boy. Like, you know, he's judgmental. He's going to put his foot in his mouth. He's going to make a terrible impression. Um, But he obviously apologizes profusely. And then they just start – well, Santiago and Noah, they start, you know, working on their uh, sportsmanship, I guess, and their teammateship takes a lot of... And because they get told to as well because of their crash from the year before. Yes, because obviously it would look bad if they both don't finish a race or if they can't work together. Because, yeah, it is that awkward competitiveness where you've got to work together, but you're also going to work for individual accolades and stuff. And they also, yeah, need to get sponsors and stuff for the team. Oh, yeah, for sure, for sure, yeah. Oh, and also from the epilogue, we get an idea of... Um, noah's relationship with his father as well because um noah's father it's not a good is, one 
when is it ever a good relationship between a father and a professional athlete son? <laughs> His father's name is Nicholas Slade, and he was like a Formula One Nicholas champion. <laughs> And he is like the definition of a guy who just relives his glory days and just assumes he's just, you know, a magnificent person. But we obviously learn later on how trash he is. And very clearly, like, I feel like you see this a lot um, in some certain sports where the father is essentially just living out their dreams through their son. Even though he's already lived his dream, he's already passed yeah. his prime, which yeah. is pretty weird behaviour. And like, it's not like he's proud of his son. It's like he's proud of like what's come because of his son's achievements yeah for sure like he's getting you know he's probably getting a bit of commission yeah Yeah, from bendini winning like he's getting money because he invests in that and he's obviously living the glam life you know again with the social events and stuff when he can be bothered of course but yeah he's really noah being great just amplifies his previous greatness as well which sucks and later it turns out that yeah noah is quite not noah nicholas is obviously quite abusive towards piece noah of piece of shit and then his mum is also a piece of shit she's a socialite extreme socialite who does not give a damn about noah and yeah she only like calls noah when there's like a bigger man and she calls him to get like tickets into like the vib tents and stuff for like her and her friends i love that he stood up for himself later on but we could probably talk about that later but is all this an excuse for him to be a viable reason for Noah to be such an arrogant and like like I, don't, I suppose there's nothing wrong with being a fuck boy if you're like doing it safely I guess I don't know trying to stem it back to his like shit parents and like I is mean, it a good excuse I, I don't know I always say like your upbringing is like shouldn't be indicative of like who you are as a person like and I think people were saying like oh like my mum was my parents were trash so now I'm trash it always yeah, goes into this thing there's like this um anecdote and it's about like two brothers and one's an alcoholic and one's not like one's really successful one's not and someone asked them like um oh like how did you get here or whatever and they both so say oh my father was an alcoholic oh uh, yeah yeah it's just a, how breaking i guess the generational trauma as the internet likes to say yeah but i suppose yeah like noah doesn't seem to be like he does he's not an abusive type at all like he's not verbally like harassing maya or santiago and i think also like yeah, he hasn't had clear... Oh, like a clear relationship yeah, to like look at clear, as well? Um, yeah, exactly. Like a clear um, example of love and inner relationship. So, like, he doesn't know how to treat women or whatever, like, because he's never seen that. And he's almost 30. How sad. Or oh, he is 30. How sad. Is he 30? <laughs> yeah, he's 30 in this book. Oh, God. <laughs> Jesus Christ. Um, yeah, I think his parents are divorced. Yeah. And, like, yeah, she just hang and, yeah, the mother just hangs on. She must have gotten a pretty good settlement or something because she's, yeah. yeah, trying to live the high life. Mm. And she's probably, like, a socialite as well. She's probably on some committees. <laughs> yeah, for sure, for sure. Um, but, yeah, I just wanted to bring that up for Noah in case we forget to talk about it. But there we go. Glad we have a consensus. We meet two other race car drivers from t- a different brand called McCoy. We have Liam and Jax. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I hate the name Jax. Yeah, me too. Something about it. <laughs> Jax is British and Liam is German. Oh, it's just, um, sorry, on Vanderpump Rules, there's a guy called Jax and his real name is Jason anyway, but he's a disgusting human. Okay, fair enough. <laughs> <laughs> we love other nationality representation in here. Yes. <laughs> just, to, just to show how, inter- in how international it is. audio book, when they spoke, everyone just had a German accent. So, I'm not er- a German, er- sorry. <laughs> <laughs> American accent. Sorry. Oh, that sucks. Yeah. Damn, they couldn't even put and on a fake. Was really low. Oh, I can do it. I love when I get to show and tell. <laughs> show and tell. <laughs> I suppose it would be hard to do a German accent if you're not German, because then you end up stereotypical, and it probably doesn't sound accurate. Mm. But I feel like if you practice, it's not that hard to do a British accent either. Yeah. His voice is so deep. Someone yeah. passes me the trophy and I hold it and her in my arms. One of the happiest days of my life. He sounds so old. I know, and it's so <laughs> juxtaposing. Like, I don't... <laughs> what, what does Maya sound like? Uh, I'll get it. All right, this is going to be a new thing. We have to judge the audiobook <laughs> voice actors. <laughs> Anytime Kenzie listens to an audiobook. I think it's hot. I just don't think he suits it. All right, Wait, that's fair. So- Noel preps for the final pre-race despite the crash last week. All smiles and jokes as sure. the crew works in the garage. <laughs> sure. Okay. You'll play it? Yeah, yeah. I'll play it. I didn't like that either. Don't want to sound mean, but this is probably very ignorant 
it sounds like with the female voiceover artist it sounds like the same i feel like i've heard her voice before yeah they all sound the same so but i feel like from hooked and scarred and this the guy all sounds the same as well okay yep yep i mean get that bread i mean yeah. open yourself up to that but yeah ultimately we're gonna notice <laughs> so yeah jackson liam hang about they're not in it as much um but their presence is annoying sometimes <laughs> and unknown <laughs> I mean, they're all like they're like Liam is one of the is described as one of the biggest fuckboys on the circuit. So on the planet, he has that title as well. And even Jacks, like they all just can't keep their names out of the media for awful reasons. So mm. shows you the type of guys they are. And unfortunately, mm. you can still be an awful person and be successful at what you do. Life is just shit like that. Um, we also meet another character named Sophie. Mm-hmm. I'm annoyed at Sophie's. <laughs> uh, presence in this book as well <laughs> i feel like it's just an excuse for her and Maya just to like talk boys like that i don't feel like they don't have a genuine friendship Does this in a not way past the bechdel test i don't remember i don't know <gasps> i think so because i think they just talk about joining the camp oh, yeah. or is it talking about men in a romantic sense or just men in general men in general i feel like maya would have explained she was here for her brother therefore no no i think she knew who i think sophie knew who she was I don't remember. No, I think... Oh, no, because I spoke about her dad. <gasps> Wait, we have a Kindle. Let's maybe they have it on our phone app. Maybe they spoke about shopping or something. I don't know. Maybe. Mucho successo. Mucho success. Sorry. We love, we, love a, we love a bilingual queen. Do we think it was the Oval Teen? What? <laughs> um, we bought this $14 Oval Teen. You know Oval Teen? No. It's like Milo, but oh, not. Okay. Anyway. Is it cheap Milo? No. Anyway, um, you can get little lollies of it. Anyway, but we bought it. It's a powder. It's like hot chalky drink, but it was meant to be. It's been promoted as like a sleep one. Like it has magnesium and stuff in it to like promote sleep. So wow. Why are we shocked? What's going on with you? In reaction to what you're saying about that thing, like is it liquid melatonin? No, it's magnesium, not melatonin. Ah, okay. Melatonin is not regulated in Australia, so it's hard to get. I feel like I know people who get it pretty fucking easily, but okay. <laughs> yeah, well, I know people, like, you can just get the gummies online, but, like, it's not, because it's not regulated in Australia, like, you can OD, oh, because but, like, you're just going to yeah, sleep. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> All right, no, I can't really find when we get to Sophie, but I feel like it does not pass. I don't think it passes the factor. Actually, no, it might, because it might be, wait, is Sophie's, it's not Sophie, is Maya's mum ever given a name? I don't remember. No, oh, because they could talk about graduation or something. I don't know. Uh, I think that because, yeah, Sophie talks about just graduating, I think, within their first meeting. It's like, hi, I haven't seen oh, you yeah. here before. Oh, yeah, I, I reckon it wouldn't have... She would have had to have said she's here with her brother right off the bat. Oh, yeah. Anyway, uh, controversial. We love our controversies between <laughs> us. Um, so, yeah, we'll, we'll just move on, I guess. But, yeah, Sophie, her presence, yeah, I feel like it was just an excuse to, like... I think it was, yeah, a writing mechanism to further the fuckboy plot. Yeah, for sure. Even for Liam as well. But I suppose later on in the book, you know, Sophie also goes out and travels with Maya and is a part of the vlog and stuff. But yeah, it Mm. seems like all their interactions, though, are either like around the boys, like they do go on a double date and stuff. Mm. And yeah, she does talk about her Sophie's lack of like experiences in like college and shit as well. And they're talking about like, yeah, their I guess their sexual experiences and stuff as well. I feel like that's all that they're there for. Yeah. Just to talk about that and highlight that and didn't seem as genuine to me personally mm. but no she's there and her father is the big boss of bendini principal he's so not called. the principal yeah yeah yeah. It's, yeah it's called the principal it'll be like the principal sponsor or something no daughter of bendini principal big boss oh what report to the dean's office <laughs> pretty much stop pretty fucking much. all the girls on tour <laughs> Pretty much, pretty much. Get your dick out of the media. Direct um, quote from the next book. Um, okay, I want to talk about how Maya and... I was going to say Rudolph. <laughs> what did Rudolph come from? I have no idea. I want to talk about how Maya and Noah got together. But it was so unextraordinary that I can't remember. <laughs> <laughs> love that, love that. Um, I think it's just through natural developments of she would I did the- enjoy the slow burn and like it wasn't like, oh my god, you're so hot, let's fuck. Like it was like, no, you need to put in the effort because you're being an actual piece of sh- human being. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 
So, yeah, the, I guess, timeline of their relationship, it's probably kicks off when Maya does all the behind the scenes stuff for her vlog. Once she realizes the F1 niche is what's driving her channels, um, she starts interviewing Noah and, every, and everyone seems to love it social media wise and you know she's in interviewing other drivers mechanics all sorts of people and i think it's just a natural chemistry no it was kind of a big thing because noah never does personal one-on-one in -on -one interviews mm. so the fact that she was able to do that i thought there was going to be more of a conflict with the in terms of the social media like a lot of hate comments or like jealous mm. comments because mm. normally you see that come about it was like oh noah's too good for her or is this noah's new girlfriend mm. blah 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 but lucky yeah. that never came about that's what i was going to say i thought that there would be a lot more comments being like oh my god like they look like they're floating or something like no parasocial relationships today <laughs> And then, yeah, I think they just continue talking and then Noah, I think they make a bet and if he placed, they go went on a date no, or something. No, no. Right? Yes, you're correct. But it's how Liam and Sophie end up on a date. Oh, yep, yeah, that's right. And then they go with Jax. That's right. And then Noah, like, finds out about it. That's hilarious. He got killed by a chicken. Um, <laughs> that, yeah, Noah finds out, finds out about it and, like, crushes the date. He's like, yeah. why wouldn't I invite them? <laughs> and then, yeah, Liam and Jax are like, what the fuck are you doing here, bro? Yep. But he's always he, he's just flirting with Maya the entire time. And of course he's doing this behind Santiago's back because mm. they just want to keep it a secret. Because they don't want to like put off Santiago's game. And then while this is happening, like the racing's going on, everything's all well and dandy. Like it's again between Noah, Liam and Santiago, who comes first, second, third. Like they're all winning, they're all positioning. Mm. Good time. Noah and Santiago crash again, which is a pretty big thing because we see Noah really popping off on Santiago, cussing him out and stuff because he crashed. Because that means they didn't finish, and not finishing means no points. And also, it's a huge like conflict for Maya because she is like trying to be there for her brother, but also she's now in love with this man, so she's trying to support him. And that was like one of my gripes. I was like, at what point? Actually, there were two crashes. There was one at the end, and this was a well. There were three crashes all up. The yeah, well, there was a solo the crash. Yeah. Oh yeah, that's right. That's right. Yeah, and I'm like, at what point, like, are you just like, okay, my brother's like a big grown-up boy, like, you can support him, but you can also, like, put your attention on your boyfriend. <laughs> yeah, Santiago's like 25, mm. I think, in this, yeah. Oh, another part of the timeline, I suppose, with Noah and Maya kind of falling in love, N Noah tanks a race for Santiago to win because he liked the way Maya was excited for him. Yeah. Like, that's cute and, and very also, selfless. Is that the one? No, but he let him win his home game. Home yeah. Lives. Oh yeah, in Spain. Yeah, in Spain. Oh yeah, that's after the double date anyway. They attend a fashion show as well somewhere and like I just wrote so much tension. There's a lot of tension between Noah and Maya as well because it's also they don't want to get caught because I think Noah also has a whole I don't want to fuck around vibe this season like just focus on the racing. Is this way as well like because Sophie like knows what's going on. Yeah. And they're like all up in Of course she does. They're, yeah, they're all up in the because it's the, the, she's not blind like apparently everyone yeah. else is. And they're all up in each other's grills. And then Sophie comes over and is like, your brother is looking for you. You're like, yeah, stop. Yeah. <laughs> it's always the third party character. Mm. Always, every single time. I think they must have had a kiss at the fashion show evening as well or something. Like they mm. kissed somewhere and then they did the whole avoiding each other for a couple of weeks because they... Oh, yeah. She also, at one point, they have a fight or something. She stays away for like a couple of weeks. Yeah. Oh, Again, I'm getting lost in the intricate details of what ha happens in what order. But yeah, they do have a kiss. They go on a date as well at some point. I think it's like kart racing. And like they have a good first date, but then they have this big talk about what they want and expect in a relationship moving forward. And they come to the conclusion that Maya has more of a standard, I guess, than Noah. And Noah can't accommodate to that for whatever reason. Also because they kiss or something and then she goes and fucks another woman. Yep, yep. I hated that. Like, bro. Yeah, I'm hell. like, like, bro. Like, give her 24 hours or something at least. Like, but how else are we meant to show he's a fuck boy? Because he's fucked no one else since until now. Oh, I don't know. Maybe the entire narrative of the story explaining <laughs> that he's a fuck boy and he hasn't done anything about it. Oh no, that's what I was. Oh, I forgot to say in the beginning. Oh, this is so funny. A part of my thoughts, feelings, emotions. It was gonna be like if I had a dollar for every time. <laughs> A male character chapter started with there is a hand on my dick <laughs> i would have two dollars by now which isn't a lot but it's but amazing it's, that it's happened, it's happened twice, twice. <laughs> yeah because it happened in I uh, icebreaker yeah but it's like yeah that, yeah how do you 
you know, distinguish a fuck by, oh, sh- he wakes up from sleeping with a chick and now he has hands on his dick or something. Like, surely there's other ways. Why does it have to be a hand on his dick? Why can't it just be, uh, there's an uncomfortable weight across my chest or something? Or like, sure. or you wake up and you look over and you just see like a tangle of hair. Yeah. Yeah, I don't know. you got to be more intense than that, Kenzie. <laughs> Maybe they're ready for a morning morning session. Who knows? No, but boys just wake up with woody, woody willies. Yeah, she's trying to help him out. There's no informed consent in that moment. I know. I know. <laughs> but, oh well. Anyway, yeah, he tells her to fuck off. Pretty close to that quote because you know he's he's you know unhinged and mean yeah, he's like, like that. Get the fuck out of here. He's a tortured race car artist. Yeah, that's why he works for Disney. <laughs> but yeah, anyway, back to yeah Noah and Maya avoiding situation yeah because they just have different standards and want different things in a relationship and then of course they have like their big chat well he goes to therapy he does go to therapy good on him i know we say this all the time we say just go to therapy yeah even though there are some qualms like the book is going in the right direction in terms of trying to heal the men instead of maya trying to save him he has a therapist and then he like realizes he's like oh i'm ready to like settle down and like love this woman and he realizes he's being a bum hole because he's like i don't want to lose her i have a qualm now okay he turns Dirty. 31 <laughs> 31 in this book right he has Where had he's never had a clear oh model God. of what love should be. i don't care and no we wait hear me out give all these men a break because it's not them <laughs> Men just need to evolve, all right? Relax. They just need to find the right girl that'll help fix them. It's not even my qualm. Not even close. (laughs) He's turning 31 in this book. He has had decades of a stellar career, right? In Formula One racing. Now he's at a point where he's won his millions. He's got his big ass houses, all that shit. He wants to settle down and have a family. Maya is just at the beginning of her career. Why is it fair for her to no? But to she doesn't keep know up she to his bed player. She's just gonna be a wag. <laughs> I know she's a wag. And she that's her prerogative. That's wag. her right. <laughs> it's her right. She deserves this. Honestly, if I graduated and I landed in the arms of a millionaire, I'd be like, this is my lot in life. That's fine. And they want a kid the next within the next year of dating or marriage or whatever. That's You'd fine. You okay with that? That's fine. Jesus yep, Christ. we can get a You'll surrogate. Do- <laughs> you'll do whatever it takes yeah because if you just think about like a timeline he's having a full circle moment where he's ready to settle down maya just hasn't had much of, also, of a chance okay, to figure out what she <laughs> sorry <laughs> i just don't think it's fair that she has to adhere to his benchmark even though he's had more years of life yeah. doing whatever he wanted yeah he's a qualm because like men can father children for all of their lives but women sure. are like ticking time bombs. So like, why is it that they have to wait for the man to be like, okay, now I'm ready to have kids? There's that discourse on the, on TikTok all the time. Always. Yeah. yeah. I don't know how true it is, but yeah, in line with that, you see videos of women having these speeches about how men will do things like marry or settle down for children when they're ready. Yeah. Like in that moment, it's like, I want to get married. So they marry like whoever they're with or want to... Yeah, I saw that. It's like women with. marry for love, but men marry for convenience. Yeah, or whenever they're like ready. Yeah, like they'll moment. get ready. Yeah, yeah. I think that common lines with, and I think this is that situation almost because he's ready to settle down and have kids because he's had his decades of fortune and he's career. Sowed his royal oats. <laughs> yeah. All right. And then Maya, she's at that point. Yeah, she's just finished college. I mean, I'm sure you still like learn a lot and have experienced a lot, but like she just hasn't figured out like a career wise. And I feel like that's not fair for her to have to. I don't think she's going to though. I think this is the good. I think this is a good wicket for her. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I mean, he can be just like retired, and she can do what she wants. And then when they're ready together, they can have kids and get married and all that shit. Yeah. Um, oh, there was also a moment where it was the, it was when Noah tanked his race, and his father went and talked to him, and he like smacked him, yeah. slapped him, like and a little bitch. <laughs> Kenzie, sorry, this is, a, this is abuse. What are you talking about? <laughs> and Maya sees I it, saw and, it, and she doesn't really say anything to anybody. And then him and her have a talk about not telling anybody. And then they fuck. <laughs> they don't. But okay, <laughs> you are so wrong. <laughs> But yeah, I mean, there's like a long time ago. I'm sorry. Yeah, no. I read this stu- book when the F1 was still on. We, we've been stewing in this for a little while due to being busy, so like everything's a bit blurry right now. Yeah, so no one therapy. I think his therapist helps him realize that he wants to ask Maya out on a proper date, mm. even though yeah, they did have. Th- actual girlfriend. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't know what they did on that date. They may have been car racing at that point. I don't know, but it was a nice date. No, oh, that was. A- but anyway, my notes in this is things go well, sexy times. 
race car track dates. Oh, no, he takes her for, like, a hot lap. Oh, yeah. And she's freaking the fuck out, which that would be a very cool so yeah, social media video. I know she makes a YouTube video out of it, but that's still so cool. Okay, I have something. Okay. Could the hot lap have informed her adrenaline into agreeing to sexy times? Because this is the thing about me. <laughs> You're grasping at straws, kids. No, I'm not, because this is the thing. There's a whole discourse about like being on The Bachelor. And you know how they take them on these like really intricate dates and stuff? and Like, it'll like be helicopter like, flying? Yeah, like helicopter flying or like climbing the Sydney Harbour Bridge or like skydiving and stuff. And their adrenaline like goes up so that then when they're like back in the house or whatever and they're thinking about the guy like their body is like remembering like their like heart rate and stuff was like elevated so they mistake like adrenaline with like feelings and lust and stuff and lust. right but also like my it was not doing anyway so it's fine but i just wanted to bring that up. <laughs> <laughs> i'm sure that is a true you know psychological thing and physiological thing that happens yeah and that's why like a lot of the bachelor people don't work out because you, they go back to their houses and they're like oh you live in a shitty studio apartment in sydney <laughs> They, they don't go on adventurous activities every day. No, yeah. You don't actually have a like a normal Aston home Martin life. you can drive me in every day. Yeah, yeah. Or a fucking Hummer or something. Yeah, you have a Nissan yeah. Leaf. <laughs> what is with you with the, the Nissan Leafs? Like, you're really <laughs> shitting on it. Uh, I think it's funny. <laughs> what, did the, what did the Nissan Leaf ever do to you? Um, it's called a Leaf, for starters. <laughs> I mean, so is is Leaf forever trademarked by Nissan? No. Anyway. They're, so they're flirting around, hiding about mm. amongst the Bendini racing camp and all that. They're sneaking around. Mm. Noah's dad gets a little sus. Now, I yeah. thought this was a little far-fetched because I feel like he doesn't pay enough attention to Noah. I know. And I was and like, yet... he hasn't been there to see anything. If anything, it should have been like the pit crew. <laughs> so, yeah. And that, yeah, that was annoying. Why is he the one to notice it? And then he starts threatening uh, Noah like um, you know also your contracts like, on the line your sponsorships yeah, are on like, the line like, why why is that a threat like I don't know don't like don't have a girlfriend <laughs> yeah, yeah, you're not I think to have a girlfriend. though because this is after he tanked the race deliberately in Spain to let him yeah win. for sure yeah 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 but still like it's such a yeah why did he have to notice yeah um, I was just gonna say he also threatens to not renew Santiago's contract as well oh, yeah. if if Maya is affecting Noah's performance yeah which also like doesn't seem like that's a thing that would be allowed <laughs> yeah no because yeah, it's like yeah if he's performing well and he is and like he's winning and he's getting points and stuff it's like surely that would be like Sophie's dad decision yeah yeah I think sure Sophie's dad is the boss of the Bandini I think no- uh, Nicholas, he's more about the sponsors. He writes sponsors' yeah. checks and stuff. And, like, you need sponsors to be able to afford parts and race at the end of the day. So, then, in, ter- in terms of hierarchy, he's bigger, higher yeah. up than... And I thought this was going to be more of, like, a plot point, but then it's, like, the next chapter, he's, like, told Santiago. Yeah, it's very resolved. Yeah. yeah. And then, yeah, no, it's just, like, well, I earn enough that, like, I can sponsor the team. Like, I, yeah, like, you're done. And they cut him, like, they get rid of him as a sponsor anyway. It's like, you could have figured this out two chap like 15 chapters ago yeah um but yeah well let's talk about that i guess revelation nicholas ends up telling santiago about noah and maya as if santiago already knew i think and obviously there's that big freak out of we never told santiago santiago is now in shock yeah um they're both apologizing profusely and stuff and, and santiago like, gets I, a little I, pissed I, I, I really don't like these things like this, like when you find out like your best friend is like sleeping with someone or like your sibling or whatever and they're so shocked and it's like if they're happy like that's fine like I understand sometimes people have a reputation but like obviously if you trust your sibling friend whatever enough then you would trust their judgment like I don't know I just find it sometimes always like crossing I don't know, crossing a line of like what's appropriate in a sibling relationship. <laughs> yeah. Because they always talk about how, or Maya always says how Santiago is very protective. Mm. Although we've never really seen any evidence of this in the book. It's just all hearsay. Oh, he's very protective of me. He's protective of me. When has he ever, like, physically stopped Noah from talking to Maya? When he has never barged in on an interview being like, I don't want you talking to Noah, blah, blah, blah. Mm. Like, that's being protective. Mm. Or being silly, but being protective. But then, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I get that, though. Like, trust your sibling's judgment because I can fix him. (laughs) Then I think in that moment, Nicholas, he insulted Maya and then Santiago punched him, which we love that though. So he did a full 360. He actually likes Noah. Or he's upset, which I suppose is fair enough. 
I suppose it also, you didn't want to create a rift between the team anyway. Yeah. Because I felt like, especially towards the end with that second crash and like, or the last crash and the last race, it really turned into Maya wanting Noah to win instead of like Santiago. Like there was a clear like, I'm now forever loyal to Noah. Yeah. And I didn't necessarily like that. Because again, like Noah, he's had a full accomplished career. Like what's one yeah. less championship? But yeah. no, he had but to I, win. That's what I was saying before that. I was like, I understand like your brother is a grown man. Like you can still support him, but also like support your boyfriend. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. But yeah. like when when um, you've been boyfriend for two weeks in the last yeah. two weeks of the race circuit. Yeah. And then also like their whole, um, like the h- half of the plot of the book was oh my god like we can't tell Santiago blah 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 and then he's just like um okay just don't make out in front of me and we're good yeah yeah, for sure yeah pretty much okay I want to talk about the Noah Slade solo crash sure I wanted him to be a little bit more broken from that you wanted him to be like injured (laughs) yeah you you want you want the tormented injured sex didn't you yes the torture porn sex yeah I need it I need it in my life I need it to live um <laughs> like he's in the the car is on fire and he's like get me the fuck out of here and i was like couldn't he's he just like i don't know broken his arm or something or like done something and he's in hospital i don't know and like i think it would have been cool to say i should just write this book <laughs> <laughs> if he yeah had been like injured like and fine but he had to like forfeit the rest of the pre and so then it was on Santiago to win for the team oh that would have been good though mm. but th- I feel like that could have been maybe a, a little too predictable but I don't know I'd rather that than just out but also it was also Noah predictable that he was going to crash yeah 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 someone had to crash yeah outright. yeah I thought he was either gonna get like burned or something because yeah the fire and everything yeah. Um, yeah, it's a mighty crash. Yeah. Yeah, a little bit more hurt could have been pretty good. Even if he had a bung wrist or something and it yeah. was hard to drive. Yeah, or he had to skip, what, like, one race or something, like. Yeah. Then, obviously, Maya was very worried about that, like, visibly yeah. worried and shaken and stuff. And, like, they have that hug moment where, like, you're okay mm. and, you know, blah, blah, blah. Cute. Love that. At this point, yeah, they're officially boyfriend-girlfriend. Mm. Everything's, the air is cleared. Her, her YouTube channel is also successful also quickly um yeah Santiago kind of downplaying her social media success and being Mm. like will you ever get a real job and he starts doubting her career I didn't like that considering yeah yeah, she's become so successful and considering he's been so like supportive of bankrolling this lifestyle (laughs) exactly yeah like he's happy to do that but then now he's like turning into that parent and like also now now." like at what point does Noah start bankrolling this lifestyle (laughs) (laughs) from now on yeah or from when they get engaged (laughs) Probably, yeah, yeah. But yeah, last race, and Noah is actually nervous for some yeah. reason. Character development, I guess. Yeah. Or regression. Because he has know. something to race for now. <laughs> so corny. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, just be selfish for one more race, you idiot. Yeah. I believe in you. <laughs> anyway, so Maya talks on the radio, and it's actually a very cute conversation. Yeah, cute, yeah. Pretty, pretty corny, but yeah. Yeah. It's pretty much an overlooking of their relationship and they're talking in third person and yeah. it's funny. And he eventually does win. Yeah. Which, Which like, yeah. Spoiler. But, yeah, like, as we I was, do. Yeah. But at, like, this point, I'm like, Maya, you're, cho- you're choosing between Noah and Santiago right now and you chose Noah. Like, yeah. come on. You've been with your brother for 99% of this entire circuit. Like, and yet, <laughs> betrayal. <laughs> so, yeah, Noah wins and eventually... Uh, Maya receives a full-time social media gig with Bandini, so yeah. now she's bankrolling her own. I guess shit. now Bandini is supporting her lifestyle, yeah. <laughs> which in turn is still like Santiago <laughs> to a degree. <laughs> it was Noah. like how it was already. <laughs> and Noah, she's got all the streams of income yeah. right now. She's got the passive income. And it's like, okay, Noah's like thirty-one. Realistically, how long can you race for? Like, once he stops racing, like. <gasps> I f- you, that just brought up stuff. So, <laughs> there are moments in this book. It's actually quite cute, though. Moments in the book where Noah witnesses Santiago and Maya's family dynamic, mm. and he's oh, like yes. so oh. je- jealous and sad of, of that. And he invited her parents he to the last race them out. because he has officially cut his parents off because he stood up for himself because therapy told him to do it. And we love that. And then yeah, he's just like, I want to make you guys proud now. And yeah. Yeah. He just yeah he loved the dynamic, and that is so cool. Yeah. Found family. I know. It's so cool degree. Okay, so epilogue. We love an epilogue. Yeah. Yeah. One year later, they're in one of Noah's, I don't know, mansions that he owns. Sure. And he proposes via a video compilation. Yeah, which is of cute. Their be- of their behind the scenes. All the behind the scenes stuff. Like moments in press conferences where he's just staring at her, some extra footage of when they did that hot lap, mm. stuff like that. So cute. And yeah, yeah he proposes. Yeah. Then there's an extended epilogue 
which is just on they're getting married slash on their wedding day which is cute hello <laughs> it was an extended epilogue i swear to god <laughs> kenzie you've technically dnf'd up until this point jesus let me I check you liked this book. i might have just gotten it out i can read it to you no hang on hang on it's a noah chapter oh it beca- okay so what happened i haven't read it <laughs> Because let me show you. That's like I can't see because of the background. Oh, okay. Oh, here that's, we go. Yeah. Yeah. You see that? Okay, so that's the last page. Yeah. And then it just goes to that. Oh yeah, yeah. Like that one. And then you just thought you're done. And so I thought I was done, so I didn't continue to scroll. Oh yeah, yeah. Hang I understand. On, let, me, let me quickly read it. Oh yeah, I understand. It because I swiped back the page and it just happened to me. Understood. All right, read the page. Live reading from Kenzie. Oh, he made her a garter. Gross. Oh, cute cute that's it thoughts feelings emotions i'm not things. done yet i'm just oh, okay okay i thought you'd be sarcastic all right that's good that's all right <laughs> i'll <laughs> final, pay it final final thoughts oh you'll pay it <laughs> hey a personalized garter or he- homemade garter From or whatever the barcelona it was. flag yeah it's cute right yeah or is that just it's more of an affiliation to her brother though which yeah exactly <laughs> <laughs> yeah that's weird <laughs> incestuous vibes <laughs> I take it back. I take it back. <laughs> and then, yeah, that's the end of the book. That concludes Throttled, I guess. Yeah, nice. And I, I too, truly was throttled by this book. <laughs> <laughs> All right, shall we? Shall we go to the stars and listen? Sure. Yes. Oh, I like that though. You like that? that? Be, yeah, that could be. <laughs> that could be what it is. <laughs> All right, do you want to go first? Uh, sure. So yeah, this is the part we've added a, a segment. I don't know how it's going so far, but. Um, we are just going to pick a one star review each from Goodreads just for a bit of fun and a five star review and we will read the first star first because we want to end on a relatively positive note. All right, I'll go first. All right, this one's a bit of a paragraph already. And again, we haven't dug too far into Goodreads to find these so like you could have seen them on your own accord but yeah. Not the type of book I'd read, but since everyone on BookTok kept raving about it, I thought I'd give it a shot, despite the cover. Ooh, damn, she must have... Oh, damn. She, they, mustn't have liked the cover. I liked the cover, like, with the film camera and everything. Like, that's... Yeah. It was horrible. I hated every minute of it. (laughs) The male male protagonist has the emotional maturity of a two-year-old. The writing resembled every poorly written fan fiction that exists on Wattpad. I simply could not care for any of the characters. I mean, true to a degree. It doesn't help that all the characters in this book are strangely misogyn- misogynistic in a way, in the way that they treat women who sleep with F1 drivers. The characterization of these women are licentious and gold diggers made me very, very oh. uncomfortable. The male protagonist also has the biological restraint of a boy in puberty, considering the fact <laughs> that he literally gets a hard on when his love interest does the bare minimum, like smiling, LMAO. A fair and valid like that's your um, opinion okay would you like my one the one star review i chose of course i do why do i do this to myself <laughs> <laughs> I love it. it's giving the um maybe dark romance isn't for me yeah. <laughs> love it all right well since yours are so short do you want to do your five star review sure holy shit Finally, a slow burn that was written correctly. I was getting sick of 400 pages of slow burn than one chapter of confessed feelings with a wedding epilogue. I mean, this does have a wedding epilogue, but anyway. Noah is such a dream man. Oh my, he's so fucking sweet. Plot was good, smart was great, and we'll def be finishing the series. Love that. Wait till she realises it's about characters that you don't care about. (laughs) Right. That was my... (laughs) Alrighty. My five star. Look, is this book cheesy as fuck? Yes. Will it go down in history as a classic? No, but damn, I enjoyed every minute of this book. Lauren Asher just gives what I want when it comes to trashy romance. Depending on your outlook, trashy romance is a good way to describe it as yeah. well. Like, I'm, I'm happy with that. Yeah. And in my searching for the five-star review, there was a lot of comments about enjoying the epilogue, but I suppose everyone loves that happy, happily ever after moment. Yeah, so. for sure. So we love that. And yeah, that concludes this episode of Letterboxd Book Club. Yeah, thank you for listening. Thanks for listening. Yeah, check out next week when we discuss the second book in the series, Collided. Yes, it's I'm a very, very excited episode. about that episode. <laughs> yeah, yeah, so please listen along. It'll be very interesting. <laughs> um, follow us on the social medias, our social medias. We hope to be as successful as Maya one day. Probably not. 
we'll see how it goes i mean my instagram is private so <laughs> yeah, so is mine <laughs> for work reasons and not for like pretentious reasons yeah but yeah follow us on the instagram at letterbox book club link in the bio find us in all the places if you go there but we are also on spotify youtube apple podcast google cock Bod- Google Podcast, even though no one cares about that. you just got to stop saying that every time. I have a TikTok. Google phone, a Google laptop. You have not A Google Chromecast. Until now. <laughs> Google, just name all your Google products, okay? I you will. get it. But yeah, that's it. So yeah, check us out for next week. I have a Google oh. clock. Sorry. Oh, a Google uh, clock. Now I'm done. Yeah. Is it just like a special a, a, like alarm clock? Or yeah, you can ask it, just... it to tell you the weather and shit and like get recipes for you. So is it just not like... Like an Alexa or Google? Yeah, sort of, but it's Google. A Google Nest, is that what it is? Or is it... Or is it it yeah, seems yeah. like it's a clock, but it is like that, though. Yeah, yeah. Google, sponsor us. And yeah. I won't shit on your podcast platform. Thank you. <laughs> Alrighty, thanks for listening. See you next week. Bye-bye. Bye.